Welcome to this episode. Now, I'm absolutely thrilled today to have with me Tina Grabisa. Tina, first of all, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me today. Thank you so much, and very excited to be part of today's discussion. Uh, Tina, could you start off by telling us about your academic and professional background? Sure. So I'm from Toronto. I attended a business school here where I specialized in finance and strategy. And that naturally set me on a path into finance. So I did a rotational program at a big bank here in Canada in the corporate finance division and then ended up on the tech team at a different bank. Did my time in finance and decided that I wanted something that was a little bit more challenging and outside of the box. So I joined a tech startup in San Francisco as a client strategist, uh, but I did still miss my financial background and people that I used to work with, the type of work that I used to do. So I decided a nice combination would be finding a, a software company that kind of marries the two. Uh, I found Athenian. Could you tell us what your current role is with Athenian? Yeah. So my current role is a fund operations consultant. And that isn't a very common name in the industry, but what it really means is that I work with our private equity and VC customers at various stages of the customer life cycle. For, so anywhere from a prospect all the way to a long-term customer, I really help them derive value from the platform, kind of design their custom workflows, and really stay ahead of regulations with the help of technology. So could you tell us a little bit about the primary product offerings of Athenian? Sure. So private equity aside, more generally, we're known as a cloud-based entity management platform that's intended for legal teams and mostly law firms, as well as Fortune 500 corporations. We've since then expanded from that general description. We now service all variations of customers, and we're really fast growing in the private equity and REIT space. And really, our product is designed to automate compliance tasks, governance, various reporting for various regulations across the world. And really, we're seen as a solution for corporate records management, various compliance tracking, subsidiary governance, as well as custom document generation, which is unique to what we do. But more specifically for private equity, which is more so up my alley, we're seen as a tool that's used to manage compliance around portfolio companies. We help our sponsors ensure adherence to the private fund rules, such as the form PF, the quarterly statement rule, and various other SEC reporting requirements. We're always trying to keep a pulse on that and stay ahead with our platform and our CSMs, our customer success managers, and how they enable our unique customers to really stay ahead of those certain regulations. And then on the contrary, for other global companies, uh, our solution is tailored to handle various cross-border entity compliance requirements. It can be things such as subsidiary governance with a local presence. What would you say are some of the key features of Athenian that really sets it apart in the marketplace? Yeah, so I think the way that we were developed as a company and how we've expanded our use cases for legal teams has put us in a unique position in the market. What we've seen as a shift in the general entity management space is that a lot of these legacy co co uh, companies are moving from a system of record to a system of engagement. And that's where we find ourselves currently moving towards system of intelligence with the use of AI. And really what I see as a key differentiator for, for us is allowing those teams to collaborate. So expanding it from the general legal teams all the way to tax, to finance, to debt and capital markets teams, and allowing these and these users to really self-service from the platform and extract uh, key points of data so that they can follow through with their reporting requirements or any other downstream reporting um, activities. Uh, and I think we also have a really strong focus on compliance management. Uh, particularly for regulations such as the CTA, the SEC's private fund rule. And our features are mostly focused on centralizing data, really having those automated compliance tracking features and having those tasks and alerts uh, to really reduce those risks of penalties and really make sure that our clients are uh, ensuring to meet those filing deadlines. How does the platform increase efficiency in both corporations and law firms? 
I can see the efficiency around the types of workflows that we have. More so around corporations and law firms, we have automated workflows that help comply with the CTA. Another regulation that I'm more familiar with is the SEC reporting requirements. But really for uh, global companies, they can benefit from multi-jurisdictional entity management to comply with various uh, local regulations. And that can be any Brexit-related changes or any local regulations. And then for law firms, what we see as the efficiency is simplifying those legal entity management tasks, such as KYC, data, and document retrieval for their corporate clients. So being able to provide that white glove service and really speeding up the way that data is imported and used as a central source of truth. We have audit trails and automated document generation that can really simplify that process, not just for law firms and corporates, but any customer with multiple entities. One of the most significant questions I wanted to ask you, and the one that I'm most excited about is the following. How can the Athenian platform actually help to build a culture of governance within an overall ESG framework? Yeah. Before I started at Athenian, ESG was something that I was familiar with, but didn't really have that much ex expertise in. I think where we come into play um, out of ESG is the governance. So really creating that culture of compliance is very critical in the market right now. It's becoming increasingly critical, such as the EU's Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive. We know that there's a huge focus on this and having that data transparency and making sure that we establish best practices with our customers as they're adopting the platform so that when these regulations do become significant and very much so impactful, our customers have the tools that they need to really have accurate information, be able to report efficiently, and have a lot of confidence in the data that they're reporting on as well. And we really help automate that governance process and track various aspects of ESG metrics. We have custom fields. So our, we know our customers can leverage that when it's time to implement such uh, robust compliance programs and really ensuring that they have alignment with other various regulations that we're keeping track of. One of the things I don't think we talk enough about is knowing the truth about your subsidiary's compliance status. And I don't know if that's because we just assume you always know. We just assume it's low-hanging fruit. We assume the subsidiary is reporting up. But how does the platform help a company really keep a thumb on that very issue? Yeah, so we're seeing the pressure to, to become a lot more visible on the, those sorts of data or points of data. And we're seeing the regulations being pressed by the SEC. But really, from a platform perspective, Athenian offers that real-time visibility into compliance, both for subsidiaries and for COs. We know that's critical for global companies that are managing entities across various jurisdictions. What we see at the PE firm level is that they can track compliance across their portfolio companies so they can ensure these local regulations. They use it for AML, KYC, and following those various SCC guidelines. We have automated notifications on our tasks for any changes in, the, in our certain workflows. Uh, we know that uh, entity creation is a huge aspect for that part of the business. So uh, we can set up tasks and reminders for various different teams to be able to report on any new entities created or any new entities dissolved. Um, but really making sure that we are on top of the CTA, any alternative investment fund managers directive. I know that that's going to be a huge a wake up call for a lot of our private equity companies, but also making sure that these workflows are automated enough and can be uh, leveraged to report on a timely manager. One critical use case that we've seen with our private equity customers is with the private fund rule. It's making sure that they can report on a quarterly basis. So prior to, we have a particular customer prior to using Athenian, they had no visibility on their active and dissolved entities. And at the time of adoption and onboarding Athenian, the SEC had released the private fund rule. We know that has gone through various circuits, but the quarterly statement rule still applies. What they're able to do on the platform is create their entities and collaborate with their outside counsel, generate these custom-coded active, ent active entity and dissolved entity lists, 
And from that, they can create these quarterly statements, quarterly consolidated statements with the help of their tax and finance teams to report on these standards. We know that's critical. That's one unique use case to ensure that those huge pressures of compliance for portfolio companies, but there's many more, of course. You know, I have a friend and colleague who says every time you talk to him, it's all about the UX or user experience. I wanted to ask you, how does Athenian incorporate the user experience and customer feedback into your overall innovation process? For sure. So customers are number one to us. I work closely with our customers. We're always listening, um, discovering different use cases, hearing them out on possible integrations and understanding how they can drive value out of the platform. That's our main priority. It shapes our product. We're very big on customer feedback. We have a continuous feedback loop to really ensure that the platform is evolving to meet the latest regularly ne regulatory needs. But I think a testament to all of this is we originally started out with law firms. Our, our clients have expanded across various in uh, industries now. We have real estate, we have Fortune 500 companies, we have private equity, we have VCs. So really we're always evolving and that's to the credit of our customers. So our customer experience is the most important thing that we do in our business. And we're always keeping on top of trends, needs, regulatory tracking. We really wanna make sure that it's easier for our users to stay compliant. Um, that's our main focus. So we, we keep them at the front. Uh, of our of our focus. Tina, you've done a great job at taking us literally into a deep dive into the various aspects of the Athenian platform, but I wanted to maybe ask you to step back and on a more of a macro view, how does Athenian aim to transform corporate governance and entity management? Yeah, for sure. So on a global scale, Athenian aims to really simplify corporate governance. I think we've spent a lot of time being very critical on how our customers are using the platform so we can develop the platform to see, seek their needs. But really, at the end of the day, we know what we're good at. We have to simplify our focus on those core use cases while we have new customers that are coming off of spreadsheets. So what we see in our industry is either we have customers that come from legacy softwares or customers that are coming off of spreadsheets. And there's a huge change management effort that needs to happen for those customers that are coming off of spreadsheets. And really what we try to do as a company is simplify that process, knowing what their goals are from a corporate governance standpoint and allowing them to do that on the platform. And we know it's especially complicated for companies to navigate global regulatory requirements and they're ever evolving. We can't advise our clients on how to stay ahead, but we can certainly guide them with the help of technology. And really how I see it evolving in the PE space, because that's a little bit something that's closer to, to what I do. But what we really want to do, and I think it's a unique positioning in the market, is stay ahead of SEC filings, make sure that our workflows are clear and simple and cross-functional. The private fund rule is one as an example that I shared earlier, but really helping our clients develop these complex workflows, simplifying them on the platform so we can help them avoid any penalties and really ensure that transparency because we only know that the transparency requirements will increase. Tina, if I can ask you to maybe turn down the road a little bit, what are you seeing as some key corporate trends in governance and compliance from your position? Yeah, so from my perspective, like me and my colleagues are always attending events and keeping a pulse on what's happening in our respective industries and just what's happening globally. I think global regulations are tightening. I think that's evident everywhere, but there is a huge focus on ESG, especially anti-bribery laws in the UK. Beneficial ownership is huge for us. The Corporate Transparency Act is something that we spent the last year preparing for, preparing our customers for. With the help of an inter integration, our customers are able to do that on the platform. But really increasing regulatory pressure on private equity firms would be the biggest. There's a huge need to enhance reporting transparency. It's something that isn't an easy practice historically. It's like I said before, it's a huge change management shift for our customers. So really guiding them through the process and 
enabling them to do it with technology. And that doesn't mean just legal entity management. What we've learned over the last few quarters is that there is a huge need for integrations and for understanding where the data lives. Um, it lives on various different teams. It requires various different pieces of technology. So building that ecosystem and helping our clients build that ecosystem is a key trend that we're going to see in that space. So heading towards that system of intelligence for sure. Where do you see AI taking the workflow platforms, at least in the area of corporate governance? So AI is a, a very buzzy word. I think we, as we heard many people talk about it. I know whenever I'm looking for a piece of content or a piece of technology, their AI is always thrown out at me. I think we've been very intentional with our AI here at Athenian. AI has huge potential uh, as a trend to really automate the monitoring of compliance requirements, particularly, I think, in global organizations with very complex governance structures. But it can also assist key firms by providing predictive insights. I think that will be a huge trend trend that we'll see with future compliance risk assessments or risk based on past performance and really reducing that exposure. I think that's a trend that we'll see in the space for sure. And then how about in the area of compliance as opposed to perhaps corporate governance? Same answer, more or less? Um, I think same answer, more or less. I think what we see is AI is moving from or AI and compliance is moving from detective to preventative. Oftentimes, it's a scavenger hunt for our people to, to find information, for legal teams to find information, to find documents that are required for equity grant issuances or new formations or dissolutions. So really what we're seeing with the trend with AI is generative AI can flag potential or historical compliance issues uh, before they arise. I think that's a trend that we'll see in the space and really ensuring that global companies and various sponsors comply, can comply with regulations across different jurisdictions. I think that would be a cool spin and very useful in the space. We started with corporate governance, then we moved to compliance. Let me ask, uh, where do you see AI or at least the Athenian tools helping boards become more effective in their role? in both corporate governance and compliance as oversight? Yeah, so what we've seen with Athidian is that we need to work with a group, or I like to call it an ecosystem of tech providers. We, we don't currently have a board portal or workflows that would be leading us towards a board portal, but one unique use case and what we see value of is storing those board portal docu or board portal documents into the actual platform and having them as the central source of truth. I think that could be seen as a use case for Athenian to have that board compliance oversight. If we have our customers logging in and out of different platforms, it would be great to house this with an integration. We're actually partnered with a UK-based board portal service called Board Intelligence. So we are exploring some use cases with them. We do see this as an importance for our customers, of course. We're definitely in the early stages of seeing how we can leverage those tools to track compliance and really create that central source of truth and simplify that access and retrieval of documents and data for our customers. Tina, would, how would you advise a GRC professional to stay innovative? in as fast moving a tech world as probably I've ever lived through? Yeah, I mean, it's new for me too. So <laughs> I would say just stay on top of uh, various global regulations. The important ones will always be thrown at us. Obviously I'm not a legal professional, so I can't provide any specific advice there, but really the number one advice that I would give is embrace tools like Athenian that can automate compliance, that can reduce grid risk and really improve that transparency. Transparency is only going to increase from here, especially in the global regulatory environment. So find those unique use cases, work with your tech providers to provide feedback on your unique use cases within an organization and be open to integrations and building that tech stack because Data has to flow from various systems in order for it to be accurate and effective. We can no longer rely on one piece of software. 
course, as we've seen with the boom over the last few years, a lot of people have been burned by technology, but there are still very confident and, and great companies out there that allow their customers to give insight and build off of something. So building their unique tech stack. So really focus on finding those unique use cases and then collaborate with other teams, expanding those use cases beyond the legal team with finance, tax, other teams that might require the information or teams that are more likely emailing you asking for information. That's always a good place to start. I'm going to ask you to look down the road to 2030 or so, and where do you see the evolution of workflow platforms as we move into, dare I say it, mid-century? Yeah, exciting times. If I had a magic wand and could have my input on this, I would expect platforms like Athenian to continue leveraging and integrating with more AI-driven predictive compliance tools. I think that would allow them to stay ahead of regulatory changes. I can't even imagine what the regulatory landscape is going to look at 2030, but global governance tools will likely expand to address new regulations as maybe cross-border data flow is important or digital tax compliance. I think those are just a few that I can think of that might be further down the road. But yeah, I'm excited to see what, what happens, but I'm sure it will be influenced and driven by AI. Tina, unfortunately, we are near the end of our time for this episode. But before we leave, I wanted to ask you if any of our listeners wanted to connect with you or find out more about Athenian, what might be the best place or places for them to go? Yes, I'd love to connect on LinkedIn. You can, you have my name is up front, Tina Grabisa. We can connect there. You can find us and feel free to reach out. We have a lot of great resources, blogs, and posts that you can use for your internal knowledge or just education on the entity management space. Well, Tina, I wanted to thank you again for taking the time to visit with me. I hope we can continue this conversation. Yeah, likewise. Very nice chatting today.